We're good. Good evening. It's seven o'clock. We have a quorum. We'll call the planning board a meeting to order. First up for general information is Mr. Heiser. Do I need to stand at the microphone? Or? Please. I can wipe the in here from there. Okay. Anyhow, I just have two things I want to let you make you aware of. Item number one is I have I brought before you a preliminary very small subdivision for Tudrin on Breckenridge Road a month or two ago yes and we're getting close to being able to bring that forward as a final definitive subdivision I want to let you know that okay item number two uh, I am building a very large garage on my business property on route 9 it is not intended for business at this time I feel like sooner or later it's going to get to you guys that I'm building this building so I just wanted to put it out front that it's happening and it's right now it's we can, we can start streaming you now if you want feel free um, but if at some point I get a tenant or whatever then I have to come back before the board and show you plans of parking and drainage and all that stuff before I can use it for business please please really yeah, well, I'm not gonna. I know I'm gonna plead that I know I can do it if I need to, but right now it's not intended for that. Okay. Thank you. All right. A couple of uh, just to keep Bill up, and um, we did get. A, boy, this echo was awful. We did get uh, at a last meeting, Bill. You missed it. We voted to put both the more. Yeah. Can you turn off that microphone? There we go. That's better. There's no now, there's no, now there's no voice out there at all. <laughs> anyway, um, at the last meeting we voted to put both, because I think we're getting close on the medical marijuana, not the medical, the recreation marijuana zone bylaw. So we voted to put both the moratorium and the bylaw on the fall town meeting and vote on whichever one we find out to be appropriate. Table one and vote on the other one. Okay. Yeah, I did watch the meeting. I think that's that's a good plan. Uh, is David Nixon here tonight? When do we have to have text to you to post the warrant? October third. October third. Okay. So that is after our next meeting. <coughs> Day after, so so we cannot defer to our September uh, to our October. No, I will, I will be scheduling a public hearing for the Tuesday before the town meeting. And, and what did you say, October third? Yes. Okay, that's the day. We're in September. October third is the Wednesday. Right. We meet on the second. Meet on the second. So, so whatever update Susan has, we should be able to okay. get for the third. And the public hearing will be on the 16th. The town meeting is the 18th, correct? That's correct. Okay, so we're all set. We'll hold the public hearing on the 16th and everything will be good. And we did get another request for a zone change. And this is from David Nixon, his town administrator. And this is to see the town of vote to amend section 5, subsection 5.4.1 relating to parking by adding the sentence, municipal projects are exempt from parking requirements enumerated in this section. So we'll add that to the agenda, for not to the public hearing, to the warrant, the uh, zoning amendments, and we're required to put that on and see what action the planning board takes with the public hearing. Oops. Who's presenting it at the town meeting? I would imagine. David, who's, who's gonna make the present or because there are certain questions when you say municipal. I noticed that the uh, it, it, Mr. Zirana, the grammar school. That's not, that is not a topic for tonight. No, no, but I just wanted to make a point so that they're aware of the fact that at the grammar school there are 50 automobiles there. You may not want 50 automobiles in a different thing, but sometimes the school may need it. So when you ask for a blanket exemption, we'll, be we'll, careful. We'll, we'll discuss that at the okay. public hearing. That's not a topic for the this is This is the article, there's a way to be presented. And they'll have to, they'll have to address it at the meeting. Um, let's 
see. With that, we have nothing else for dental information. Mr. Strongwell. Good evening. Oh, just for information, this meeting was not posted as a joint planning board selection uh, select board meeting, but we do have an item on the agenda to briefly to review the site plan reviews for library and senior center. So this is not going to be a big long discussion item. Uh, we'll answer some general we'll answer general questions and stuff like that. But as far as a long discussion on the senior center library wasn't it properly posted because we didn't even know about it except what was in the newspaper. So just so everybody realizes that. Okay. I know David, Phil had reached out to you last week also, um, and I just got back to you today just, you know, giving you an email of what we had expected. Um, we just want to have, and having people in the room, just maybe some direction. Um, you know that the vote was taken three to two to reduce the size of the building. So we're looking for some direction. We've instructed the OPM to start working on and Colliers to work on to reduce the size of the building. So I just, you know, between everybody wondering, well, where do we go next? I just wondered what the planning board had for us. Okay. I could give you some general information. I know I was watching the select board meeting when it was vote was taken. And there was a number of eight that the project was 800 square feet shy of parking. I don't know where that number came from because the last calculation I had, there was about 4,000 square feet shy, not 800. So I don't know where the 800 square foot number came from. Um, but said with that, if the building is reduced by 2,000 square feet, if my 4,000 square feet is anywhere near correct, you now meet parking, okay? And the parking lot theoretically wouldn't even have to be changed because it would call, it would meet the parking requirements of the senior center and library. So there wouldn't be, I mean, I don't want to say there'll be no redesign. It might be a little, depending on how the building is reshaped, there might be a little bit of uh, changing in the entrance or whatever it might be, but there would not be a new parking lot design required because the reduction in building would take care of the problem. And we do not have to have a new application. I Correct. Hear you could, that would just be continuous. Pardon? I didn't hear what oh. she asked. Oh, she, oh. Go ahead. She asked if there'd be a new application. I said, no, it's a continuation. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, it would just yeah. be, you know, if you give us an idea tonight, well, actually, we do need an idea tonight because it was the last meeting that was canceled or was canceled for lack of a quorum was continued tonight. So we do need to have some kind of an idea when you would want to meet again so we could just put this meeting off until that time, okay? If you want my two cents, I'll throw it in. I think yes. if, the, if the project is compliant with zoning, there'd be no planning basis for turning it down. Yeah, there, that's, that's a good point. Site plan approval, I want to give this an explanation. Site plan approval is a special permit process. Emphasis on the process. Site plan approval is not something that the planning board <coughs> has authority to say no to because they don't like the project. We have an attorney general decision. Planning, site plan approval used to be an approval process, not a special permit. It was always required that it be approved by, by four out of five members. However, the appeal process was extremely convoluted and it put both the aggrieved party and the developer in a horrible situation. You didn't appeal the planning board decision to the courts. You waited until the building permit was issued and the aggrieved party had 30 days to appeal. So I will use, for example, um, Mountain, Mountain Farms Mall was approved two years ago to tear down the Burger King and uh, Old Florence Savings Bank buildings. It still has not received a building permit to my knowledge. So roughly every three weeks, the agreed party, I'm just gonna use three weeks to, to be safe for the 30 days, would have to contact the building inspector and say, has a building permit been issued? Has a building permit been issued? They would be doing that for two years. Mr. Neihart would be mighty sick of listening to this person or party, but that would have been the law. And we had that happen a couple of times. Now the developer 
is put in a far worse situation. They're lining up all these contractors to get built, only to find out we've got our building permit 20 days into the building permit process, there's an appeal. Stop all the work. So everything that they've been lined up with is at a halt, and they can do nothing until this whole process is, is continued through the ZBA. And then once the ZBA makes a decision, now they can go to the court. So it could be many, many years for this thing to finally be settled. Under the special permit process, it is much cleaner. The planning board approves, you have 20 days to appeal. If you file your appeal on the 21st day, too bad. And that has been upheld time and time again by the court. So both the agreed party and the developer have a very definitive time frame on the special process. That's why we put the special process in, strictly for the appeal period. The Attorney General, when we put that in, gave us in writing, we approve the process, but be aware that you only have authority over zoning issues. If the project meets zoning, you are required to approve it. You do not say, it's not a special permit process, well, we don't think it fits in with the neighborhood, we don't like this, we don't like that. No, that's not the deal. If it meets zoning, you're required to approve, like Mr. Dwyer said. But that's only for the site plan approval. So, any idea when you may want to continue this too, Mr. Reedy? November 20th. November 20th. You're going to bring the turkey? Better believe it. Really? What was the reason for the delay? It wasn't posted properly by us. No, we no. posted. No. We posted. Set continuation public hearing on application for the proposed new Hadley Library and Senior Center. Set continuation date only. Correct. Okay. So that's it. That we're setting the continuation date. Fifteen to the to November twentieth. Well, at the meeting. At the meeting when we. When the meeting was canceled, and uh, we it was continued it for one week to one set week a new date, tonight. and it was the discussion I thought was going to take place. No, no, no. That was why it was continued because of the 2,000 square foot reduction. They didn't know what they were going to do, and they wanted some, some clarification. Oh, so yes. I heard clarification. Could you mic, Thank. You. Oh, I'm sorry. I heard clarification. This doesn't seem to be on. It's on. Okay. Um, I heard clarification. Thank you for that. I appreciate that. Um, on that, if your sense was that if the building is reduced, there shouldn't be any issues with it pass passing the two to one. Um, I think everybody would like to know that or or get a sense from the other two dissenting voters, that that's also what is on there? Excuse me. Yes. I, I never said that I was a dissenting oh, vote. OK. Thank you. That's a misstatement. Thank you. OK. Um, I did. OK. So I guess I'm asking you both um, that you would see the site plan as um, something that should get approval if that building was reduced to that size. That's my. For me, that's a reasonable statement. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. We should get my vote. Okay. Whether it's a reasonable statement, I don't know. <laughs> and? I'm, do you well, have a comment to that? No. I'm going to wait for the meeting for a surprise. So, just, I mean, obviously there are a lot of people here tonight, and we understand that we were kind of uh, landing on one of your regular scheduled meetings, but um, I think, I understand what Joyce is asking, but I think part of the conversation we had at the select board meeting that I know is shared by an awful lot of people involved with the projects is that there's so much misinformation going around. I mean, I think that the hearing, the site plan review specific meeting is one thing. Um, what some of us were really hoping to accomplish was without necessarily deliberation or anything would be to, 
would to have the opportunity for planning board, select board, and the respective building committees and OPMs to make sure that everybody was dealing with the same set of information. Just like you said, Jim, I mean, numbers are flying around, square footage is flying around, the select board took a vote with a, I'm not going to call it arbitrary, I know there was thought behind it, but with a very specific set of, you know, square footage. Um, the OPMs did continue the works after the last meeting. I know that they had a meeting as recently as today. My understanding is that they've come up with something that potentially could actually work with the existing square footage for the site plan. So I don't think anybody wants to waste time. We all, all collectively want to move forward. Um, so trying to figure out the best way to make that sharing of information occur. Uh, and I have, I'm sorry, the Municipal Building Committee I would throw in the mix as well. Again, the, um, and the reason I say that is because um, I would think that when we're weighing our options, if there are any options, if we're weighing them, we want to make sure we understand the total impact to the projects in terms of time and ultimately that will lead to cost. That's where I think there's an awful, awful lot of misinformation that people aren't really clear on what a, a certain direction means. So how, how could we get there in terms of just getting everybody's questions out? You you, yeah, it sounds like tonight is not the night you well, want yeah, to do that. I mean, even, even if you had the drawings tonight. Oh, yeah, that would, no, we don't I mean, have really the drawings. So I mean, even if you had them tonight and we had been posted, it's like, we're going to look at them and do some, you know, it's probably more than you can do in a reasonable mm -hmm. hour or so meeting. Mm -hmm. So if you have, if the OPMs have a combined drawing with dimensions that, that we could look at, mm -hmm. and I could run, I'll well, to, to use myself as a, as, a, as a scapegoat, to run some calculations on and give you two cents back, um, I'd be happy to do that. But the last, you know, the last couple of drawings I was dealing with the OPMs was like, what about this, what about this, what about this? And I was answering them, and you know, we, we were getting someplace, and then the vote came, but they were, they were just adding, you know, a few parking spaces, but like I said, you're still considerably shy of the required amount. Mm -hmm. So now this is a whole different thing. So I'm not sure which one we're going to look at. Yeah, and again, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how do we, I mean, because I think there are probably some select board members that may not even want you to look at those drawings based on a vote that was taken. Well, and, and and like I said, it. It, but again, it may not have been with all the information. Like, like I, I started the meeting with, there was a number that I saw at the second board meeting of 800 square feet. You were far, far in excess of 800 square feet. So if you're trying to squeeze, you know, four or five parking spaces, that's not going to cut it. You need roughly, from what I remember the last time, was 4,000 square feet. That's considerably more than four or five spaces. Yeah, and I would defer to the OPMs okay. uh, between and them. They, they were taking the area from Green Space. You, you, you think it gets to a certain point where there's a point of no return, and you finally get in the park, and now you have enough green space. So, so I'm just asking, is there going to, would you be amenable, would there be an opportunity for everybody to just talk about the projects again in terms of timing, what changes of scope mean, and all of that? Molly, is it your intent to, to work within the current bylaw in terms of parking absolutely okay. yeah nobody's asking for, so, did not mention so, the so dover so, amendment so, so, well i just wanted to point out something you know uh, i've been reading the daily Hampshire gazette since i was a kid as a matter of fact we had to go up to the han store to buy it because they didn't deliver it and uh you know that's when i was reading the comics modern modern maidens was in there later on milk cole the uh sports writer more recently, I've been reading the obituaries, just for a diversion. You know, uh, deed transfers, real estate transactions. And I never really paid much attention to the editorial page. But I'll tell you, that article, that, that editorial, unsigned by the way, last Friday, convinced me that I'm going to start reading it because that page is really entertaining. It's very entertaining. And just talking about the Doberman, because that was mentioned in that editorial, and they mentioned two legal opinions that we had received. Well, it doesn't matter how many legal opinions we receive, it matters what the opinions say, what they say. Town Council's opinion was well written, and he gave us an honest opinion. In short, he wasn't really sure 
if the Dover Amendment applied here. The words that he used were, you may be, may be able to use the Dover Amendment. The second opinion we got was, I think the lawyer probably was told the conclusion he had to come to and then tried to argue his way around it. Conjuncture. Conjuncture. <laughs> Uh, I gave I give town council's uh, opinion a B. The second opinion gets a D minus. The only reason it doesn't get an F is I could find no spelling errors. They also talked about sleight of hand. Remember that phrase, sleight of hand. Well, I'm going to pull something out of my hat right now. A third Dover amendment. Excuse me. A third legal opinion that the Gazette never mentioned. Why didn't the Gazette know about this? It was, it was sent to us July 20, 29, 2018 from Greens, Miles, Lipton, LLP. It was an opinion given by Michael Pill. And in bold face, can the camera see this? Can you zero in on that? Can you zero in on that? It says, library parking does not qualify for, and I'll, I'll skip the legal, legal documentation, educational zoning exemption, because Goodwin Memorial Library is not primarily an educational use under Massachusetts case law, nor is it a library located on educational institu an educational institution's campus. Why didn't the Daily Hampshire Gazette get a copy of this? Okay, that's enough points. You, you, I think you made your point. And I've got so, copies, excuse me, one other thing, I've got copies of that opinion here if anybody would care to take them and read them, because apparently nobody has. So would there be any appetite for a meeting where we could have a sharing of information? I have no problem In advance of the uh, hearing that... I have, I have, you, you want to do that at your next select board meeting? Well, that's... Tomorrow. No, well, no, that's no, tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, next week. No. Two weeks. Nothing. We could do or a we could schedule a special meeting. meeting. We, we could do a special meeting next week. Next you know, week. If we keep meeting every week, I'm going to have to get a raise, Jim. It's good to hear. What was that one? And next week? Next, next, like, I mean, we can do a meeting next week. Okay. It's good to hear that October we're October. trying to work to a reasonable conclusion and resolve the, the problem. Uh, Sue, so you're asking our opinion, and that's a reasonable uh, question to the members of the, of the board here. And it appears, from my opinion, that there is some give and take, and there is a solution it looks like on the horizon. However, one thing troubled me is the fact that uh, to exempt the, the uh, David Nixon is going to present something at the town meeting to exempt uh, municipal buildings from parking regulations. Uh, this, who was it presented by, David? Well, that, that was a placeholder that was put on well, who as a result it on? of the previous meeting. Who put it on? On the select board request it, right? The, oh, no. Was it a, was it a three to two vote? No, no, there was no, there was no vote. It was a placeholder on the town meeting. By whom? By whom? Um, it was going to be conversation between the select board and the planning board. That was based on a couple of, to, I don't know how many hearings. Because you know. I do, I do spell. We, and we have not voted on that, Joe. Is my what, point. What, what, what the, what the wait, point? Wait, 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 no, Joe. No, I, I want to make this point. It's perfectly clear. Every, we are being up front. You're not being out front. That is the backdoor way of exempting this particular project from the parking or the zoning issues. And somebody is sneaking it back in without full disclosure. Once again, we were, somebody is deceiving us here. So and that is critical to be noted. Yes, so I want to just speak to that. Again, just because of the timeline that we all have to follow, just like you have hearing requirements, there was consideration given to trying to see if we could get a vote on town meeting floor to change the bylaw specific to parking for municipal buildings. That was a thought. When the thought was floated by multiple people, what the select board did was told David, go ahead and put a placeholder on there, which is very, we do that all the time. 
as we get closer to fall town meeting, then we need to take a position on that. It's my understanding right now that I, I'm not aware of anybody actively working on language for that well, article. There, there has to be it. somebody pushing it. I have it in front of me. Well, did, that was what David put in for a placeholder. Did the chairman, wait, wait a minute, a place, there's, no such, there's, there's no such thing as a placeholder for a zone article. So let me understand this. Is this a request for a bylaw or not? It was, a, it was a, my only knowledge was a request for a discussion. And I know that I had some discussion directly with Bill Dwyer, right? You and I talked a little I, bit, but there was no specific, work done. Specific on words are, I, specific requirement, this, this is exactly the wording. For the requirement of MGL chapter 48, section five, I am transmitting a proposed article to amend the town of Hadley's own bylaw concerning parking for municipal projects, then it goes to the article itself. So this is an actual request for a zone amendment. Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, the uh, select board directed me to, to uh, submit this to the planning board under, as you cited, Mass General Law Chapter 40A, Section 5. I have 14 days from that select board meeting to submit the article or else the article would be invalid. So this is a transmittal as required by law. At what meeting? But the select board say they didn't vote on it. Yeah, what meeting did it happen? I believe it was the two meetings ago, so that September. would have been the ninth. Did the select board take a vote on it? No, that's what we're trying to say. Not on the language. Then who instructed you to do it? Select board have... Uh, they said they didn't take a vote, so who, who instructed you to do it? This is a this is a process which is defined by Mass General Law. No, 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 no it's not 14, a process. I have the 14 vote. days to submit it. The vote, Mr. Nixon. So and not one selectman can take the action of a board. It's a majority that carries and gives you the order. What majority gave you that order? This is a, a process that is defined by Massachusetts General Law. It is not something no. that the select board can. Not can one or two selectmen can take on and do these things to and you the planning board as required. Mr. Nixon, not one or two selectmen can do this. It takes a majority at a public meeting to do this. Now, what kind of deals are you doing? Underhanded deals are you guys Mr. doing? Yeah. Mr. Chair. Yes. So what we were hoping to avoid was having emotions run a little bit too hot and too high. Yeah, we it. So we're asking respectfully if we could make sure everybody's in the same room at the same time so that we can dispel any rumors or concerns, including the ones that you are voicing right now. Um, we're working again, to a conclusion, you're right. Yes, I mean, so we're just trying to get everybody there. Um, don't think there's any... You guys are working on that. And, and this is, certainly this is... It, it, it certainly bothers me because everybody was going to be forthright and the transparency issue came up and it appears that this is something that is not transparent and it appears like, well, if all fails, this is our, quote, Dover limit. Uh, no, and again, what I said at the beginning, I'll tell you, the OPMs got together, they worked on a plan to see if they could make the uh, parking work in accordance with existing bylaws, no no change in bylaws, no introduction of a Dover Amendment. That may or may not work. Thank you, Jim, for being willing to take a look at that. Again, if you saw the last select board meeting, you understand that there's a division on the select board right now as to whether or not we should even bother to proceed with that original full size, I don't know what to, to well, describe, full size meeting, or to immediately go to a reduced one. And we just want to make sure that all of the information is on the table so that we can make an informed decision because that includes impact on scheduling costs, etc. That's all we're asking. And it would be helpful to have everybody who knows something about it in the room so we can do that. Yes, in the 14 days is after a vote is, I believe, and I'm really recalling from memory when Selectman used to present a lot to the planning board, not the other way around. At the meeting next week, would somebody be willing to mo make a motion to withdraw this placeholder on the planning board? I want to know who put it on here. Next week, you have the meeting next week. Right. We, just, we had it on, okay. as a joint thing with the okay. planning board, but okay. it had to be the I don't know if they were Okay. Yeah. May I propose this? How about if we have a joint meeting next Tuesday, the 25th? Planning board, selectmen, and whoever else you want to have attempt. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, seven o'clock or six, seven o'clock, okay. right here. Can we just check? Or is there anyone want to do it? Want to do it in the town hall? No, do it here. Um, just want to make sure both of the uh, is Mark Sullivan here? Or? Yeah, yeah. Oh, there you go. Can you do the twenty fifth as well? Yeah. And Phil? Yeah. Okay. And Suzanne and where's Allison? Yeah. yeah. The twenty fifth is kind of a. Okay. Sorry, I'm just looking around to make sure that all the parties are represented adequately to. So okay. the twenty fifth. The twenty the twenty fifth is important. Let me explain why. Mm -hmm. Because that would give you time to cancel your zone art your zone amendment. Mm -hmm. If it if we don't meet on the twenty fifth, I need to get the publication to the Gazette for publication on October a sec second and ninth for the public hearing on the 16th and if I don't get it in by Wednesday or Thursday then it'll be too late for any zone amendments so it's it's kind of a drop dead date in that sense so the 25th of everybody if it works for everybody that's great and you'll be posted for a meeting that day so what's, what's the what's the meeting on the 16th the sick the 16th will be the public zoning we have to have the zoning public hearing on any zone amendments in and we have to do that for master under laws, the public hit for, for that for that's the whole system to for uh, to adopting a zone amendment. So that will include the adult use marijuana, the moratorium extension, and the roof uh, change right. change in roofing right. materials. And there's also going to be two general bylaws per pertinent to marijuana. One for the for whatever reason, this is according to the attorney general. We need both a zone bylaw and a general amendment to limit. 20%. I don't know why, but I'm not going to argue with them. That's what they said. And there's also going to be a, a, a general bylaw amendment to the open container bylaw to prohibit the open use of, of, of marijuana use mm -hmm. for adults. Okay, and that's all with, we're, I'm working with Mike Mason and David Nixon on that one. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, so. 25th. 25th, 7.15, 7 o'clock right here. So let's let's okay, work through you. exactly what the agenda is going to be. Uh, we're not going to be making any decision. It will not be a continuation of the public hearing on the Senior Center Library proposal. It will be a policy coordination meeting between the boards. Yeah, and I, I would also throw in there, um, I would just call it a joint project update. I think probably the place to start is to just get everybody back on the same page as to where we think we are. Right. And everybody agree on that and then go forward with drawing possible call, permutations call of where we go from there. Drawing review, maybe a good moment. Well, drawing review, but I, we gave a directive three weeks ago to reduce the size of the building. And I want to know from the OPM tonight if that's been in progress. So two weeks ago, at, uh, Phil Palumbo, project manager with Colliers, OPM for the Senior Center project, um, two weeks ago at the select board meeting, a vote was taken to reduce the Senior Center building to 10,350 square feet. Uh, the next day, we started coordinating with the architect on getting a proposal from them for their ad, um, ad services to produce that redesign of the building and the site. Um, we then kind of tabled that effort till the director of the senior center got back from her vacation, so we picked up that effort the following week, um, and it was then that next Wednesday, last Wednesday, where the other select board meeting occurred where there was a talk of maybe there's going to be an effort to rescind that vote. So it was at that point where we started. Where did you get that that was going to be rescinded? I shouldn't be talking about it here at zero meeting. No, it's a joint meeting. Joyce, no, Joyce is making a very good joint meeting. Joyce is making a very, very good point here because. Mr. Zagrodnik. Well, no, I just want to. She no, is right no, on. Mr. Zagrodnik, it is not a planning board topic, this one. Well, I, I'm, a, I'm afraid I have to speak out on this one. The fact that they are looking, whoever they are, looking to extend, extend so that the zoning bylaw reducing the amount of parking can be put on this town meeting. So perhaps. I've been through this before, and a, a good lawyer represents somebody here giving him this uh, get out of jail free card. So, Mr. Plum, so I got a question. When you brought the original plan to the to the uh, planning committee, did you know that it was in violation of the zoning bylaw in terms of parking? We did not. No. Well, why didn't you? Didn't you read the bylaw? Yeah, we read the bylaw, and the civil engineer that is that that's their large responsibility to understand the parking area. 
um, got the wrong information. You got wrong information? A lot of wrong information going around. All right, so what we learned at one of the planning board hearings is, you know, in the bylaw, it doesn't indicate exactly how the calcs should be done Can to you, understand. As OPM, isn't your responsibility to make sure everything is copacetic? Mr. Chair? This, this was... Gentlemen, let this gentleman speak. Keep interrupting. And the way of, what, of getting okay. back to the original question, Mrs. Right, well, okay. was posted to him. Um, so at the last select board meeting last week, correct, there wasn't a, a vote to rescind the prior vote. But in watching that meeting, it made me, or it made our project team feel like, okay, maybe we should continue on with the effort of trying to produce a, a site plan, combined site plan with the current building size, minus a few hundred square feet, uh, that we could, could buy, uh, you know, be compliant with the two to one. So that effort picked back up after watching the most recent select board meeting. Um, so like Molly had mentioned over the past couple of days, We've had court, uh, conference calls, and, and that effort's been ongoing. But we haven't, uh, the, the effort to understand the, the proposal from the design team, if we did have to reduce the size of the building, that has continued. We've gotten a proposal. We've put numbers together to understand schedule and cost implications. So we're, we're kind of working it on both angles so we can react quickly uh, when that needs to happen. You know, I get a comment. You, the lawyer, the engineers met with these two gentlemen off record. Then you called me the next day or the day after wanted to meet with me to circumvent the open meet law. There's too many backdoor meetings here. Mm -hmm. And to me, if I was sitting there as a selectman and you were ordered to reduce it and you didn't, I would have fired you on a spot. The board, as, as a majority board, gave you specific orders that you didn't carry out. I followed them the next day. Yeah, right, you did. Okay. No, that is, Nick, no. Anything else? Go. See you next Tuesday. We'll see you next Tuesday. See you next Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> to be continued. Stay tuned for the next episode. All right, so again, to clarify, next Tuesday <laughs> is going to be a continuation of this discussion, it is not a continuation of the public hearing, and no votes will be taken on the subject matter of the pending application. Good. So the question is whether to uh, schedule it for down here or upstairs. They want to hold it down here, okay. just in case it's, it's cooler if, if no other reason. It'll be cold by then. <laughs> <laughs> Probably will. I wish it's snowing. Be well, snowing. Who it'll knows? Be an ice box for sure. Uh, it's down That's here. Okay. Well, at least they got heat down here too. <laughs> Tom, given the developments here and the reduction that's been voted on three two by the planning board, excuse me, the uh, select board, would you withdraw your claim that this is a Dover Amendment project? Uh, for the record, Tom Reedy, attorney with Bacon Wilson over in Amherst. Uh, Mr. Sarzinski, I, I still believe it is a Dover Amendment pro uh, project because I believe a library does qualify under the Dover Amendment. It may turn out that it's not needed because they will be compliant with the two to one parking ratio that the zoning bylaw requires. Well, so I'm just saying I, I still believe it does qualify for Dover Amendment protection. I'm not sure, right, but it was certainly smooth the process out and take one more angle out of the whole thing that's going on. I don't think it's necessary. If you comply with zoning, the Dover Amendment is irrelevant. Loop play. I was wasting a lot of my time. I'll tell you. Yep. One message for you, Mr. Lawyer. Okay. It's over, Dover. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Mr. Ms. Council. All right. Thank you. That's it, Ed. Now we open our public hearings. <clears throat> Did you take, was there a motion or a second? Oh, no, there was. I'll make a motion oh. to uh, continue, go for the motion to continue to uh, November 20th at 7.15. November 20th? November okay. 20th. Two weeks away. Correct. Okay. Do okay. you have a motion? Do you have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Ah. Uh.
Which one do you want to do first? Exotic Auto or the, or the, or the subdivision? The Hadley Planning Board will conduct, a, will conduct public hearings on Tuesday, September 18, 2018, beginning at 7.15 p.m. in the Hadley Senior Center meeting room. Excuse us, there's still a meeting going on. The purpose of the first hearing is to review the application of Phil Shumway to create a very small two-lot definitive subdivision at 22 Breckenridge Road. The second hearing is to review the application of Easy Ride. No, that was that was the wrong printing of Exotic Auto. Currently located at the corner of Russell and East Street for special permit site plan approval to relocate to an existing 2422 square foot building at 373 River Drive, zone limited business. Application and plan may be viewed in a town clerk's office during town clerk's office during normal business hours, published twice in the Gazette, September 4 and 11. Good evening. Good evening. 22 Breckenridge Road, very small subdivision. You have seen the preliminary plans and the, listen, I've got small versions and I've got more legible larger versions. Uh, 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 I can we can do with a small one here. This is Mr. Shumway, the owner of the property. So what we're asking for is a waiver of the sub basically all the subdivision regulations in order to create a private drive shown as Jackson Lane on the plan. So what and, and I'll, I'll talk about the general situation and then I'll go back and, and explain what you're looking at there, the various colors. So there is enough land on this property, if we were to put in a full-blown subdivision road, we could create four building lots. So in exchange for doing away with two building lots, putting the land in some kind of conservation restriction, I also have a note on the plan that says it is not buildable and non-subdividable. And that is the, the big area that is called Parcel A, 2.3974 acres with the orange hash marks in it. So, the existing house is shown as lot two. We're creating this private road to create frontage for the existing house and the second lot known as lot one. 200 feet of frontage on the private way. 40,000 square feet, 150 foot square fits inside each lot, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The existing driveway is shown as clear or white, if you will, here. I know the last time we went through this, the fire chief said he wanted a minimum of a 15 foot roadway, driveway, whatever you want to call it. So I have labeled the road as to be 15 feet wide. The orange that you see on the sides of the driveway is where we have to expand from the existing driveway. I have a turnaround shown so that if emergency vehicle came in and had to go into either driveway, it can back in here and go back out. It doesn't have to back out all the way onto Breckenridge Road. Uh, where you, we have private sewer, public water, uh, no, the private separate to me. Yeah, I thought it's a private sewer. It was a private sewer. Well, it's is similar. Okay. <laughs> private sort of. septic, whatever. Uh, this is Mr. Tudor's old property? Is that? No. No, this is a different one. This is on the top of the hill. Oh, top of the hill. Okay. Tudor's coming in later. Okay. In a, in a oh, down meeting. further down. I don't, who'd you buy that from? I don't remember that. That's uh, Schuster. Schuster. So it's a house okay. that's way back in the woods. You oh, don't know okay. it's there. Are you the Schuster? Wait, what? Is this on the right? On the top, on the right, yes. 
There's, it's like a. Oh, Joe. Oh, so you're on. A, you're on. A, you're on. Uh, house. This is. This is. This is. Okay. Malinowski's house is down here somewhere. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. And um, so that would mean like Carl Tudor's house is up here somewhere. No, so Carl Tudor's house hill. is over down here. And across, I should have shown. Oh, so oh, oh, I'm sorry. This is the north there. Yeah. So this is actually upside down. This yeah. is this is south, not north. Right. Oh, okay. And across the street is. What is that? Oh, so you're on the east side of Breckenridge. Quinlan Drive is basically across. Oh yeah, so you're on the east side of Breckenridge. Yes. Oh, okay. 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 I didn't see the yes. north arrow. Yes. So okay. it's basically cut and dry. Uh, the only the only detail I show as far as any construction goes is. Uh, to make sure that the driveway is built adequately to handle a fire truck. So you're only creating one new house lot. Correct. Okay. What is this? This a gravel road and blacked up? It is gravel. gravel. What is it going to be? Gravel. The state gravel. Yeah. Is the fire chief okay this? I. He should have. He didn't comment back. He he, he, did, did, he got he a did. copy of it. You yeah, got a copy of it. Yeah. They got a copy. You got. So he got a copy of this. Well, well, one of these two. I'll just show which one I gave the small and the big one. Uh, generally, you put a cross section of the the driveway here. Is that right, right a new? Who's going to own the the, the who's going to who's going to own that? The I would imagine it would be. Well, let's see. It's going to be. Which, which house are you living going to live in? The new one. Okay, and then somebody in your family is going to do something. Yeah, um, this would be owned by the new lot myself. So it would be lot one? Yes. Okay. Yeah. What is this, what's this lot here, open? Wood. It's, it's all wood. It's all wood. It's all wood. Yeah, you yeah. can't even see it from any angle, from any other property. It's pretty dense, isn't it? Very. Yeah, you can't, you can't see the existing house from the road. At least, I can't. Yeah, um, that's why it's late. way back there. Okay. This is still contingent upon the uh, fire chief, too, please. He should have responded. He didn't. If he didn't respond, the assumption is that he doesn't care. Wait a minute, that's a bad attitude. He don't care. I think he does. Well, that he a doesn't have a concern with yeah. what he sees. Okay. I know there are some abutters here, so. Yep. Any other questions for the board? Any questions for any abutters out there? Yes, ma'am. No, I have no questions. I'm just no. Yeah, you're you're right you again. Just clarify for us the no, driveway and how it impacts. Could you come to the mic and speak? Yep. Sure. Sorry. Florianus, 20 Breckenridge Road. I'm just asking if Randy can clarify for us exactly where the driveway is. Anybody got my reading glasses? Wait, I need reading glasses. <laughs> there. You just pass them back and forth. <laughs> The driveway is, is not changing. Okay. Its location okay, is wider. well. It's it's changing. I mean, it's staying basically where it is. It's going to be a little bit wider mm -hmm. at the road, and it's going to open up here. This dark, as you see. And um, the house. Hello. The house here is the existing house. Yes. And the, that's going to stay exactly where it is, and then the new house is where they're clearing already right now. It's up in here. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Well, he's back. They're nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, can I use your glasses? <laughs> sure. Sure. Anyone else? Yes, ma'am. Yes, Hi, I'm Kathy Hannon on 2 Quinlan Drive. Um, I was wondering if your site plan has anything to include an anti-tracking pad for the, the dirt and the um, construction of clearing and all the mud. The reason I'm asking is we worked really hard. There's a storm drain at Catch Basin at the end of Qu Two Quinlan. Yeah, it's called Lake Quinlan. <laughs> and that just was repaired after years and years, from what I understand from the neighbors, of, of trying really hard to get that fixed. Mm -hmm. And our concern, yeah, they put in new pipes. There's now drainage across Quinlan, which is much safer for traffic and in the winter. Um, and if there's no anti-tracking pad, I was just concerned about the mud from the trucks clearing everything, um, getting onto the street and then draining right down into that catch basin. So I didn't know if the site plan had. It doesn't at this point, but we do have 20, whatever the planning board decision that we have, there's a 20 day appeal period, so I can certainly add something like that 
to the plans. What, 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 what's an anti-tracking? Trap rock. She's well, trap rock so that they, that the dirt oh, will come off the oh, vehicles. Oh, 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 okay, okay, okay gotcha. Right. Right. The right. driveway's in very poor condition right now. We're going right. to put in a new driveway so we should not I understand that. Issues. It's just that we didn't want that whole, all sure. the work the DPW did and all their hard efforts to get clogged so, again. So I understand what she's talking about. You can see it, that little catch basin. Yeah, I, I don't know exactly where that is. As far as they want what they want you to do, do you understand? They, they want you to put a bunch of probably 50 feet or so of trap rock. It's, it's, it's relatively, you know, three or four inch bigger so. diameter. Sure. So, yeah. so yeah. that when the vehicles come out <coughs> doing the work, yes. the dirt will come off in the trap rock and not out on the road. So if you could make the condition yeah. that, that that must be installed prior to any... So but this, is, this is woods right now? Uh, what some, also some, be? some of it, some of the trees have been cut, but okay. that's that's it's wooded area. Okay. That so, could, that you can be a condition here when this layout is. That's the first thing that yeah, I said that, that that'd be a condition that before yeah, any right. other site work be done. That this um, anti-tracking, well, that's what you're calling it. Yeah. Well, that's, I've, I've what, never what? heard it referred to as that. Well, I, 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 I don't I don't want to use a term that is not construction familiar. I don't know what the technical term is for it, Jim, so okay. I can't help you. <laughs> okay. Uh, I want to make sure that we use a term that's understood by all that we well, tell. We're all here, so I think we all will okay. understand what okay. it is. I want to make sure to use a term that if you call, say, Carl's or River Drive or anybody else, they want some anti-tracking put in, it's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I'll, make a, I'll make some kind of a okay. detail on the plan okay. before it gets submitted for a signature. Okay. So 50 feet of trap rock on driveway at juncture with wow. Breckenridge. How, how long is this driveway here? Right there's 170 feet. I would say half of it. I would say I'd say go maybe yeah, 75 feet, 80, 80 feet, 80 feet. Because I've got I got a feeling 50 feet may be a little bit short. I mean, you got the big truck tire. There's only a couple of revolutions. Yeah, 10 way right. You know, it's uh, one <coughs> revolution of a ten. Remember, one revolution of a ten wheel is like uh, three, three nine. You're, you're talking twelve, you twelve, twelve, use twelve feet. Basically, yeah, that's like that's like two, three turns. You want more than that? Yeah. Okay, that's fine. It's eighty feet, uh, and that would just be for construction, or with that. That would, they would use that for their base. That would be, that would, that would be the base for the base right. the base for the uh, final right. driver, whatever he wants. He could even leave it in. Right. Why yeah. would he take it out? Yeah, it makes no sense. It might cost yeah. too much money to take out. Yeah. Put in, it would right. be a waste. It'd be a, it'd be a good base. It'd be beat down nicely. Yeah. So, so he may want to go further, but that's it. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Well, no, we just two two concerns. One would I'll be it right there. I'm sorry. one would be just um, an awareness of um, the neighborhood in terms of noise with the con any construction. We can, you know, what type of construction it is, so that it's done during normal normal hours. So you know. oh, we want to be good neighbors. Yeah, yeah but, you know, I'm looking to live there myself, so I'm, yeah. it's not, I'm not. No, that's so that, I want, that's I want good. That's good. And what was your name? Phil. Phil. Nice to meet you. Um, and the other one is just a concern that you're probably aware of is that, like you mentioned, it's on the hill and there's a sharp turn going up to the hill and the other one, and the uh, college kids go pretty quick. So every time we turn into Quinlan, we, we take our lives. <laughs> so sure. so we want, um, there's now going to be another distraction with two houses is probably not really as much as the neighborhood. Is, is, is there any trees right here? Yes. Blocking. It's, it's, it's a road safe. Sorry. Well, I, so I think to Jimmy's point, be clear. Okay, so you may want to take, take yeah, just cut quarter, back a little quarter, bit, not so, quarter, so much for the uphill, but more for the downhill. Yeah. Cut back at least you're gonna you know you're not gonna get a great line of sight but at least they'll cut it back a few feet to keep it clear. Yeah. 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 And, and the other one is tied yeah, right we're, into, we're a, to a telephone pole. So just to make yeah. you aware again, they come up there real quick yeah, and people, those trees people are, are blocked. And you've got a worse turnout than sure. we would. It's really dangerous with people going over the speed limit up there. How is it because it's residential? We set construction hours from seven to Say six at night. That way, somebody's not in there at five o'clock in the morning 
I can guarantee you I won't be there at 5 o'clock in the morning. No, but, <laughs> but uh, you hire, hire, there you are hire subs, there. don't you? I'm building it myself. And you, who's doing all the excavating? You? Uh, well, no, that's, that's being subbed. That's what I'm yeah. saying. I can, I can, yeah, I can that totally agree with that. That won't be a problem. So Thank yes, you. If you want to, if you want to add that, that's fine. Thank you. Seven a.m. to seven p.m. That's okay. Yeah, that's okay. That's good. That's, you know, I was going to say sometimes you hit five o'clock and you need to finish something. Yeah, if you want to, six o'clock. Seven o'clock is probably a more. Yeah, seven to seven. Twelve hour day. You got a lot of neighbors. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be dark by then. <laughs> yeah. Depending yeah. when you do the work, though. Yeah. The yeah. 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 summer will be whatever. Okay. Yeah. Anything else? Yes, sir. Just one quick question. John Shaw, Seven Women Drive. Uh, the town did a very nice job this summer of repaving our road. Uh, so it's brand new all asphalt on there. And there have been times where uh, the construction, some of the construction vehicles that have been going into the site, they've unloaded on their trailers onto Quinlan Drive and then driving across the street. And there have started to leave some marks on the new asphalt. And I guess we just don't want it destroyed. I have not ordered any construction. There's not been any digging or anything of that okay. nature up on that. And uh, so I have no problem with telling people not to park okay. over there. Right. Let's, let's, let's put it this way. If you see a wreck the road, you call the DPW because then they'll have to fix it. But, uh, Construction load and unload on on to uh, not on not on the Breckenridge or Quinlan. Well, you might want to Breckenridge. Yeah, but right I mean, if okay. somebody comes in with a dozer with cleats, they you know what I mean. They can do a lot of damage. Rubber tires are not going. All construction vehicles to park on site or on Breckenridge. Okay. Breckenridge would be extremely dangerous, though, with that curve. Breckenridge is a narrow road. What are you going to have, 10 wheelers parking on Breckenridge? That's not the middle. No, you can't do that. You can't park on Breckenridge. No. When they bring their equipment in, they're going to offload, and they're going to go right onto the site. If they go in there, clear it, they can go right on the site. So there's no reason. Yes, so actually, since there's only one lot that is being built, there is one developed lot here already. So but they're going to cut the road in first, Bill. Yeah. So there's no reason for them to park out on Breckenridge. None. Where are they going to park while they cut the road in? They, they could unload here. Okay. And if you park out, they could, you know, you're living right here right now? No. Yeah. Well, you're not. You, oh, you don't live there now? No, I do not. Oh, okay. it's a whole new development. But there, it's not there. Is it? Correct. Well, there's there is some room. I don't here, see right? any reason. There is. I don't see any reason why they can't pull in the park under the patch. Okay. So, so all that shouldn't be a problem. all construction vehicles to park and load unload on site, not on equipment. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Some trailers can't make it in there. They they have to offload on a street. You know, somebody comes with a drop next, something like that. They gotta offload on a street and then. Wheel it in, and then they're gone. Okay, let's just say not on Quinlan. Okay. Um, yeah. You know, for we're not talking about something being left there for days. No, you know, just so unloading it. Just unloading, yeah. Yeah. So. Okay. I think you need to look at the road there because it's a really bad curve and it is narrow. So if they park right in front of where his road is going to be or near there, people aren't going to see it. But they're going to park and unload and be gone. Then they need somebody on either side because it's a narrow road. The house diagonally across from him has been hit with people speeding. Which house? Um, Their house? No. 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 The, the Sylvain's old house. No, the, the the street street yeah, right they got the hit. Right? Yes, right in the middle of the road, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and they come up there really fast. Why well, can't he come down on Breckenridge? So, so there's only, <coughs> only so much we can do through the subdivision regulations. I understand. I just think you need to look at it. But I'm afraid somebody's going to get hurt. Then I think maybe the thing to do is if you see that there is a problem, call the police. Well, they, you, know, they can you know what I see a lot? And there was yeah. one in Northampton I was on. Same thing was on the corner. 
they put signs up before it and after it during that construction period. So it warned the people that there is construction there. Okay, you can tell the right same thing, thing like this. Right on the corner. I know. <laughs> They're not going to come in there with a helicopter. <laughs> I understand. I'm just afraid of accidents. Anything else? Yeah. Seeing nothing? Mr. Dwyer? Uh, what we can do here. Uh, let me see. What is your uh, June 18th? It's got a revised date on it. Uh, yes. 9 Okay, I'll make a motion to approve uh, the application for a definitive subdivision approval upon the following findings and conditions. Satisfies the project satisfies the general purposes of the subdivision control law and complies with the subdivision regulations except as waived herein. All work must be um, uh, conducted according to the plans as revised September 18th. Because of the small scale of this subdivision, the planning board determines that it is in the public interest and not inconsistent with the intent of the purpose of the subdivision control law to waive strict compliance. Um, the uh, no more than one dwelling may be constructed on each lot. No lot hereby approved may be further subdivided for the purpose of constructing additional dwellings. Layouts of ways and municipal services have been designed for two lots only, and approval is limited to that number of lots. Understood, it is understood and agreed that the roadway has been designed and will be constructed in a manner which will render it unacceptable to the town of Hadley as the town way, and the roadway will not be presented to town meeting for acceptance. The town of Hadley will have no obligation for maintenance of the way. All infrastructure, grading, snow and ice removal, care, drainage, and our utilities shall be the responsibility of the owners. Uh, the applicant shall cause a sign to be posted at the intersection of the subdivision way and the adjacent public way, identifying the subdivision as a private way. Um, that, that, uh, 80 percent of track rock, 80 feet of track rock uh, gravel uh, will be laid at the junction with the driveway and Breckenridge Road. Uh, uh, clear growth at the end of the driveway to improve sight lines. Construction limited at 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. All construction vehicles to park and load, unload uh, on site, not on Breckenridge. Uh, not on Quinlan. That trap rack you should want to size on. I'm going to say. Purchases are cautioned that the subdivision may be adjacent to active farmland. Uh, approval is subject to approval of other boards if and as required, including the Conservation Commission, uh, the Water Commissioners, and state agencies. Any changes directed by other boards must be approved by the Planning Board. And this approval should not become effective until the notice of the decision is referenced to the original subdivision plan and recorded at the Registry of Deeds. That's it. So, Bill, I just want to clear, clear, clarify one thing. That last statement you made, I have. There's a place on the plan that says uh, decision recorded in blah blah blah. I don't have it filled out yet, obviously. So, what will happen is we'll get the decision, we'll record it, then I'll put it on the plan that where it's recorded. Yep. And then I'll bring the plan in for you guys to sign. Okay. Or well, you can do them simultaneously. The, I, I worded it that way because the registry was complaining about people copying the decision onto the plan, plan itself. Yeah. So I did allow for separate recording. Okay. There's the motion. Do you have a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously.
Participating as a planning board member, but I am an abutter. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to take a look at it. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Ready? Be ready. Okay. Property is the, the, the big concern is 373 the garage. This is a pre existing, non conforming use of auto repair and sales. The current owner has passed away. His wife wants to sell the property. Uh, the gentleman who owns Exotic Auto on the corner of Route 9 and East Street would like to purchase the property and use it as a second place of business. I know on your uh, public hearing notice, you said you wanted to you wanted to move from East Street over to here, but that is not the oh, case. He's going to, he's going to keep both. He has a okay. son who's interested in the business. He's trying to okay. uh, accommodate that. Okay. So, last uh, previous owner bought this from the Lesco, uh, or the bank, I guess. He's got four clothes on. Anyhow, he came before the board. We got a... Uh, Permit, permit for 10 cars for sale. Again, it's pre-existing. We all know what it used to look like in its heyday. There were cars on every inch of blacktop and there were cars parked out in River Drive. So, in light of that, I am trying to make this a place that he can conduct his business with a reasonable amount of cars and leave space where people coming down Cummins Road or on River Drive can see around the corner, get out on, on River Drive and not worry about uh, causing an accident or being in an accident. Uh, last, the current owner has a used car license for 10 cars. We kept for that. here? Yeah. How did he ever get 10 cars for here? Yeah. Well, it, 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 this this plan is basically what I brought before you guys. Again, this is a, a grandfathered use, so I could have come in and said, we're going to put 50 cars on there because it's grandfathered. So we tried to... You would know better buyers. Well, I know, well, I wouldn't have necessarily had to. But anyhow, we got the well, 10 no, cars. I think no, 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 you're, you're, you're grandfathered for the use, but you're not grandfathered for exactly. so you're exempt from, you can do what you want. Exactly. You don't wait for any cars on this site. Okay, well, anyhow, let, let's... But let's back up a second and we can deal with that. The 10 cars was what I brought before the board the last time. And the selectman gave him a license. I think, I, Bill, did I see you have a copy of the license? I do. Does it, does it say 10 cars? It says 10 cars. Okay. Well, I'm, 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 not, I'm not interested okay. in arguing about that right now. I'm just stating the facts, Joe. Hang on. What the Hang heck on. is wrong with 10 cars? That ain't any cars. Well, no, no, no. no. Fact, what what stop, 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 stop. Let him continue. Okay. okay. So, what I'm showing you here is what's existing for the, the used car license. And then, I'm, again, I'm trying to put spaces for various uses of vehicles. The house 
is part of this property. I've got two parking spaces for that. I've got four parking spaces for customers in front of the building. There's a door here that I didn't want to block. Uh, space to put five cars that are waiting on repairs potentially and two cars for employees over here. So that's what I think is a reasonable use that's not going to block the road. So obviously I'm hearing some disagreeing opinions on that. Well, and so okay, I have up to the five cars, but I think you don't mean squeezing the ten cars in for sale is mighty tight. Um, plus, what are you going to do? How are you going to direct the traffic along coming through? That's more of a concern to me than how many cars you got there. When, when, this, when this garage was formerly run, this, I don't want to put it in. Okay, fine. You can put whatever you want on there. When this was formerly run as a, was formerly, well, less than that, yeah. That was Condrow. Meaning they were using his property? Absolutely. Okay. 90% 90, 90 of the time, cars would cut across here. Virtually nobody made this start. Okay. I mean, I can't. <laughs> It was so much because this was normally open, mm -hmm. this was normally cut across. There's this is no this distinction. Is, this was coming through. Yeah, there's no distinction right now between coming through and the yeah. parking lot. None. Yeah, how, how, how are you going to make that distinction is my question. Okay. First, let's, let's talk about this point first. Yeah, one at a time. One at a time. Let's hit one thing at a time. Let's get involved together. Okay. So, yeah, really. in, I mean, Let's think about a way that it could be done. I'm, I'm sure Paul would have no problem trying to do something that makes sense, but what will make sense? I, curb, curb cuts. You have to designate where the curb cut is going to be. You, you, there you, is you, 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 curb cut. There's no curb cut. No, you could, you'd have to, that's just it. You could put a curb in there. Mm -hmm. You put five gallon buckets. <laughs> no, this, this has got to. Okay, no, I get it. I'm, I'm not going to argue the point, Joe. I'm fine with coming up with a solution. It's just got to be something that's going to make sense. I don't think, you know, I think like a post or something because you got snow plowing and those curbs are nothing but trouble. Yeah. So if you put a post. Then you want a fence? Not a fence. Well, where's the green space? Some posts. Some posts. Yeah, so they can go between it with the snow plow. Yeah, they, they need some posts. Right. Especially. Post, especially around the corner, maybe a couple of here to guide, but that might be a good point. So allow them to get in with a snow plow, you, you, know, you know, then it's easy. So something burns. Okay, I right. go for that. Problem with that? All oh, good. Okay. You know, okay. You know, I I what's, it, what's the primary business going to be here? This auto repair. Auto repair? Auto repair. Maybe stay your class two license. If you got a class two license, yeah, then the regulation, it has to be your primary business. Yeah. Well, then what do you say in the repair is the primary business? Well, we'll sell cars and we'll repair to at the same time. Uh, I think when Jack also sold cars, their repairs was the primary business and sold now everything. Good. Right? But the laws and the laws. Well, the laws, that's more of the board of selectmen that has to worry about. Mm -hmm. Exactly because so I have I have a class two license and it's not I guess it's a primary business of my dealership. Whatever they say, whatever they tell me, interesting situation. But anyhow, we'll posts yeah. are no problem. Okay. Something that's gonna so, make sense and look good. How many feet apart are we gonna find? You probably need three on the radius, right? One at each corner, one in the middle. But enough for a plow to go through it and put one back here somewhere. You know, so then this is designated as a lot, not as a road. Here's the road around it. Mm -hmm. In the front, you don't need nothing. I think, well, you, I think you, need, you, need, you need a couple, you need more than one here because you come in here and you can swerve in. There's going to be green space there. There is, well, there's green space all over here, Jim. This is all green space. Well, well that what's going to prevent? Idea. If you put some post here, yeah. and then you put maybe like a little island there, so people would see it as opposed to just a solid 
Oh, see a blacktop? Well, maybe uh, maybe an island that's uh, a couple of a feet couple wide. Strawberry, a couple of yeah. strawberry or something. Yes, ma'am. I think it looks better. Hi there. No, My no. name is Julie Hogan. I'm at 370 River Drive across the way. I was actually at the town clerk's office this afternoon, approximately 11.15, to get a copy of the site plans, and it's my understanding from the clerk that the plans weren't filed. So I, I don't have what you are all looking at now. <coughs> you didn't, did, did you didn't give a copy of the, you yes. didn't give a copy of the plan when you filed, the, when you filed your application? Because you're supposed yeah. to do that, yes. It's my understanding that I'm not the first. I'm yeah. not the first. Yeah. Yeah. Give her that. Give her that one. Give her the jump. No, no, Randy. That's okay. Give her that one. Give her a full cycle. Okay. My concern, Jim, about the green space here is the fact that the guarantee cars are going to be parked right up to the road. If we want some way to demarcate the 50 foot setback, here, and that my suggestion is going to be to put a, a lawn there with green space. Okay. Why? If you designate this for cars, then that's where it has to be. And if he doesn't, he violates the site plan well, review. But getting, getting it enforced is another thing. Exactly story. correct. correct. No, and, and that, I, there's some good good suggestions. If you put, you don't have any problem I mean, that? Ripping up some, you have any problem ripping yeah, up that, some that, asphalt and putting it, some green space in there? I can make a sidewalk there if you want. No, 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 that's not good. What? I think so so I all, think all access for these cars is going to be from the front? Yeah. Okay. So what if, what if this is green space? So are you against they got a, they got a putting uh, access to the garage in the back. Yeah. No, 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 no. Jim. Yep. Right no, here. Right, 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 right here. I'm saying. This is green space. It gives them the access to the front, the access to the back garage. This is green space and nothing in the front. So this one. Whatever you guys that would, that would certainly take care of the car's cutting. Yes. Which would help the owner too. because I know people always cut across. So yeah. Jack and I did try to place at least something out there before. Yeah. I mean, well, right. there was a time when Jack used to put cars out here. At least to get well, hit. Not my husband. Yeah, not not other, my husband. Other, no, 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 no. Prior we put, prior we put five no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about when I was a kid. Yeah, yeah. Well, see, they were, there was cars always cutting. I remember one day he got upset. He put he parked cars here, and a couple of them got clobbered. <laughs> yeah, I just know how much work we did. I, you know, the, I could see a, fence here, a three to foot demarcate radius right here like this. Jim, I'm talking about a fence here to demarcate the housing from the business. Now you're starting to make it really hard to plow snow, Joe. The reason I'm saying this is because mm -hmm. as you look at the Bimbin site now where he is, there uh, has been no compliance with what was presented to the planning board originally. So you know there's going to be more cars there than was originally allowed. So we have to make some way to at least Try to be it more difficult to comply. Did he come in for site plan review with the plan board? Is parked on East Street now. Did he come in. No. He moved here. No. No. But eventually, this site Joe would this site Joe would ease his constraints on East Street. Pardon? Wouldn't it, wouldn't oh, yeah. the site ease his constraints on East Street? Yeah. That's what the plan is, basically, you know, all the heavy work. Do you have any, are you selling any cars on East Street now? No. no. You mean they give you a permit to put cars wall to wall every place on that property? Whatever you guys gave me. I was you know, the one. Right. Just, just the select one gave me the permit after, yeah. after they, 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 they ran some numbers and it, it turned out that they could put wall to wall cars there. That, this, this is disappointing because this is the third time it's happened that Somebody jumps the gun from a preliminary plan presenting it to us, goes to the select board before we have our site plan review, and say, oh, we've got already 10 cars. That's not the way it's supposed to go. The select board agreed that they would only issue something after the site plan was approved. So somebody either misconstrued or the selectmen did not Whose understand. Whose idea was this? Well, hang on a second, because if, I'm, if I'm understanding what you're thinking, he has no he has no license for cars. Well, how did you get the permit for ten cars? That we this was a site plan that we brought 
to before the plan. There was board. a lot of questions, and we wanted a specific plan. No, no, no. I don't years ago, Joe. Years ago, whenever, whenever yeah, when she Jack and her and husband got, got this approved, there was a site plan that was brought before you because I took the previous site plan and changed it for this. So I think that's that's okay. rather presumptuous of you to. Okay. No, no, no. Let's let's here. Okay. What, what happened in the past? Let's this let's just past. let's just move on with this plan. Okay. We're 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 trying to make progress and address the concerns. So the, the gentleman is agreeing that this will be green space in some shape, way, or form. What are you saying this is going to be, John? I would I would think a three foot green belt from this point here, line it up with this this back corner of the building here and go this way. That way he can maneuver around here, he can go in there without climbing out and going out on, on the road here and create more hazard. Yeah. Let this be here, this is the green right here. I, 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 I'm more inclined to keep that whole corner in space because he's going to be parking cars there and jamming a lot of space in there like the Joel's point. If it's green space, it will also look nice and really discourage anybody to drive put, there. Put any green space along River Drive, too, just to make it a little more slightly. Well, that, that, this green space will come down in line with this so that this, for lack of a term, this triangle will be green. Wow. Okay. That's fine with you. Whatever you guys want. Okay. You wait your hand up there. I'm, I'm concerned about the number of cars. Um, just given the two parking for the house, the four parking for customers, the five cars waiting on repairs, the two cars for employees, we're well beyond the 10 spots that I heard mentioned here. And that's not including the cars, the sale, the sale vehicles. You know, so, 10 were for the, the light, you got the uh, license to sell 10 cars. In, in the repair business, there is no limit on repairs of a, of a person can have. So we're talking about potentially over 20 cars on that lot? 15, 15, 17, so 19. let's let's talk about grandfathering. Yes. We're, we're grandfathered for sales. Yes. And there is a license for sales. Limited 10 motor vehicles on property at any one time. Any repairs must be done inside the building at all times. Sales records to be maintained. All activities to cease at 11. All motor vehicles must be displayed with visible for sale signs on them. No junk motor vehicles will be allowed. Kept neat at all times. No junk cars lying around. Now, I'll agree they're grandfathered for sales, although 10, the license was for 10, but the sales records were what, one a year, two My a year? My husband was repairing those buildings, as you remember. We worked our heart out on the house first, and he was in the process of doing the garage over. But and, and, and yes, we're talking we about what was actually recently, done. Recently, after he died, I showed you the records of. Two you, you were selling. You were selling a few cars. <coughs> a few. But, yeah, but and that, that did not mean that we would uh, have pursued it, it if he hadn't. And for purposes of argument, we'll agree selling a few cars establishes grandfather. Remember, in limited business, new automotive uses are not allowed. So, uh, you know, we're you've never been at ten. You've never had he 10 died. vehicles he on died. you, but you never, died. you've never had 10 vehicles on site. Um, well, what were all those cars doing? What? He had more than two cars there all the time. No, the Lesko did, did but the, the current owner, the current owner What was Jack's license? How many, My Jack who now? Lesko? I have no, I don't know. Jack, Jack, Jack didn't even have a license probably. Yeah, I know. That's, that's long license. before, that was a long time ago. Right. So, I mean, I, there's a license there for 10, 10 cars. Whether they sold one or they sold 200, they still have a license for 10 cars, currently. You can't exceed that number. Right. Or anybody that counts them, they could call to file a complaint with the select board. They could haul them in for a hearing and revoke their license. That can happen to any class two license. Right. So your neighbors, you watch that, and if there's 20 cars there for sale, you go, you can go to the selectman, file a complaint, and let them hold a hearing to revoke the license. So we're glad his business is doing so well. I see him out of my window from my office, 
and yeah, you you can't fit an extra vehicle on that property, I don't think. Uh, it's like a, a game when you're trying to move cars around. But we're not talking about that. This is not well, what we're talking about is a baseline here. Bill, who are you representing? I'm in a butter. A butter. Just as I'm so speaking as a butter. I have to drive by this place no, twice a day. No, no, no. Uh, Why don't you buy it then? <laughs> okay, now. You can buy it, right? Yeah. Yeah. First of all, I think 15 cars parked like that is not realistic because you got you got 3D. That means to get anything out of the back where you're going to move everything, you you play extreme musical cars. I would have no problem giving you 10 cars total there for sale and repairs, mm -hmm. but I think 15 is way too much. So. There's 10 cars total there. Yes. Then it, it just, my, my opinion is it makes it much more convenient. Um, enough said. Okay. All right, so 10 cars total. On repairs and On the north side of the building. Uh, yes. Well, the north, well, okay. the north, northwest side, well, okay. north, north, north. Can right, so you ten cars. clarify what the number ten is? Because does that include sales and repair? Okay, so you're still going to have two employees, employees and customers. Yes. Okay. You're including employees. What about two no, 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 customers? No. These are ten. These fifteen will be reduced to ten. These, the this employee parking, and the two cust the four customer parkings are still okay. So if the guy is selling cars, wouldn't he want the cars up in the front row? He can do them any way he wants. But not, he can't park in the front yard. He, he's, got ten, he's got 10 vehicles there he can park. However he wants to do them. New combination. Where, where would you like him to park the cars for sale in the backyard? Well, John, you can't park. If you gave an automobile dealership a choice, you, you got five nine, cars for sale. If, if, this if, is not a major deal. If, if he takes these vehicles out, then these ten cars will be to the back side of the building in the corner. Fifty feet is square. Well, I'm not sure if 50 feet is going to be reasonable on this. Where's the front yard setback on this, Randy? Probably more than 50 feet. Oh, that's, that's, this side, this line. Well, oh, it's only 100 feet deep. Feet. Okay, so you can't meet so, 50 feet. There's no way. You can't okay, meet 50 feet. So understanding is making it. Okay, uh, we've got to go over lighting. And yeah. See, I can't, I can't see this happening like this because you're putting this all in green. How is he going to go around here? He's going to, park park park. He's going to come up here and he's going to go over here. He's going to go on Cummins Road and River Drive. And his garage door is here. And he's going to go, he's he's go way on the still a garage door on the back side? But he's yes. not. The old paint base is still there. Yeah. yeah. We're, we're we're not going to go base. through yes. the garage, Jimmy, with the. No, no, no. Okay. Right. This, 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 if this garage is the way it used to be, this is a separate. This is a, that was a paint booth. This is a paint booth, and there's a wall here. Right? Inside? Correct. The door is still there. Yeah. 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 So this is this is strictly either a paint booth or a repair garage, and he's got. I think there's two bays in here and three bays in here. Yeah, yeah, four or five cars you can put in there. Yeah. So if he's, he's going to bring cars in here, if he wants to put something in, he's going to bring cars in here. So he's either going to come on, come in, enter on Cummins Road, or he's going to enter on River Drive, where he always used to be. To Is that going to work okay for you? Hang on just one second. To Johnny's point, how about if we leave a travel lane in here, just so you don't have to back out? I mean, there's enough room, probably you don't have to get out on the drive. I mean, if if you don't... Like, but if you leave the travel lane, then the cars can, you know, back out of here and, and do this rather than back okay. out here. Okay, well, I mean, this is delineated with, with lines as, as, as a travel lane, so, okay. so there's no parking. Okay. And also, okay. too, we have to say no parking here. Guarantee there's going to be cars parked on the street. We should say no parking within X amount of feet of the uh, of the road. Well, the goal, Joe, is to put them where I've got them shown. So once we get out of that, okay. then we got a problem, right? Can can you line All it? Right. Can you put lines on it? Because you got it pretty well. It's good enough. It's all blacktop. Yeah. Right. So we can line it. Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah. Are you planning on doing painting there? Well, it, it not, not, with, not with today's requirements. <coughs> well, why can't you that store is. some cars in the plant in the painting area before you bring them out for sale? That's his business. If it is, well, I'm just telling them how to get around this problem. Know. How would you do that? You need the garage storage <coughs> for money for storage. Where's the so repair? Right here. Why do you not? Those Paul. That's not selling. Oh, I thought those cans. I can make one for Mandy. One will be handy, yeah. That's right. There's one that is always parked in on Bendis. Never. Okay. Right. Well, you know that that actually is something. Some uses are just too dense. Yes, maybe he does need to afford to use it, but if he's too dense, if he's packing it in too dense, this isn't the right spot. For this him. is not too dense, Bill. It it's reduced down to ten with the with the repair cards and the for sale sign. I know you would want them to take everything out and leave it bare, but that's not gonna happen. How do we differentiate so, between the customer parking and the the other parking? So my concern is they're going to end up using customer the four. I think did you do a lot for customer parking spaces. I have four spaces for customers. Yes. Where I only see two. It should be the inside the door. Other side of the front of the garage, right there. Okay, so how long are customers there. able to stay, and what's the difference between the customers being serviced and I don't know what other customers mm -hmm. would be there. To be honest, it's a fine line because most customers that come in want to repair. Exactly. So, are those cust extra customer parking spots going to ultimately be well, don't forget used as sales? You've got a big garage. You're going to fill the garage. Do, 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 there, there may be some. Some of the customer cars may indeed become repairs. Yeah. We're not going to tell him where every single item must be parked. He has ten. He has 16 parking spaces, plus what's ever inside the garage. And if he decides that he only needs one customer parking and he can put the rest into repairs, right. that's, that's his business. That's a business decision on his part, okay? As long as his total vehicles usually doesn't exceed that amount. But he's already got a license for the slot. He got his predecessor well, what he was saying is, it sounded like yes. he got the license yeah. and he didn't. Right. There's no license. Well, that's what I thought. Well, right. 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 we had the license. We had the license. I had the license. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I know you'll have an explanation for this. Okay. So we have. Let's see what we've decided. We've got. Green space with a, with a drop, delineated driveway. Yeah. <laughs> These will be painted lines. Yeah. Okay. This is what he's going to make a definitive plan. I'm going to have to make all these additions. Yeah. Uh, again, this is a yes. this is a special permit, so we there's an appeal period. So I think. Not only that, but these were not on file at the clerk's office today. So I would request that we continue rolling. We are on this. we are going to continue. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll dro I'll drop a copy off in the town clerk. Thank you. Yep. We just got to change it anyways. Yeah. You want an extra copy? No, I can. No one's enough. Okay. okay. So. Uh, a dumpster location. Enclosed. Dumpster. To the dump, to the dump. Lighting? Lighting. We plan on doing anything with lights, Paul? Well, outside lights, whatever. You know, it's dark right now, there's nothing there. So. We will have some lights around just to light so up the place. I look like something. Some light well, for sure, you don't want no lights. But well, shining okay. over here, oh, and no. a car coming this way, or a car well, coming that way. Your residence is across the street and over right. here, so you want to make sure that No, whatever is. the way is going to be. Well, uh, Wendy's ready to come something. That's probably the only I'm guessing you're probably going to have building lights, lights be, probably, probably shining yeah, down. There's going to be lights on the building shining down, mm -hmm. and if he's agreeable, I would say uh, motion sensor lights so they're not on all the time. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Say, yeah. Say the road, they're going to be on all the time. Well, depending on their set. Yeah. Well, anyhow, 
the uh, well no I think it's something important to be addressed because I live directly across the street so I don't want the lights from the parking lot shining into my house well, they're going to be 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 but to the lady's point you also don't, don't want them activated spreading yeah. yes and see what you can work with okay Anything else, sir? Sign. Sign, uh, sign yeah. Okay, the sign is going to, uh, we'll have to get a picture of it, but it's going to be similar to what he has now. They're going to see, you, right. you, only have, you only have room for a building mounted sign there. Yeah, I don't think we want to put one on the, no, but the although neighbors, that might be a way to help delineate something. I'll talk with him, we'll figure okay. it out. It, it might be building. Now, if it's building only. 40 square feet, I think. In a limited business so. Forty, and is it one face of the building only? No, no. You're, 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 you're allowed two signs. You're allowed you multiple signs. I don't remember it. Let me, let me look. Let me, before we start. Why well, couldn't he put a sign right in the, uh, a sign right in the corner here? If you're putting this all green, he can put a nice sign. Well, I think before we make a right decision on signs, the neighbors should be aware can that. Be? A sign indicating the name of the business, but do you want multiple signs like tune ups, break this and that, with like 50 signs delineating every procedure that they do? And we generally do not allow that, but it happens. A business establishment shall have a sign, a total sign allowance of 40 square feet in a, biz in a limited business and local business districts. One freestanding sign of 40 square feet in a limited business district. Up to four wall signs are permitted for business establishment. Not to exceed 40 square feet total. So you could have on two, two, side, two sides of the building and a 40 square foot under green space if you want. Randy, can you come back with the measurements like from the corner of the building to the street? Mm -hmm what the front line is going to be set back so we would know what that is. We can do better than that. We should be close enough right well, the, the parking spaces are 18 feet deep. And how far is it from here? To right, 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 right here. What is it, 1 inch to 20, Randy? Yes. 20. The building is roughly 35 square feet from the Route 47. 35 feet. 35 feet here. Yeah, I, I can give you those dimensions yeah. easy enough. It just clutters up everything and it makes it hard to see. What, you want, what are you asking for, Jen? Well, I just want to see. There's 35 feet yeah, from here to here. Um, yeah, okay. okay. So any any other concerns that I so need are to we address? are we designating kind of like a no parking area right on Route 47? Let's see. We put 20 square feet. One of the, one of the things that I thought this plan would do is it's a picture of where the cars can go. Okay. That's so. But we want to make it clear. I understand. Because there is. Yeah. You're only going to be. It's 15 feet if the vehicle's 20 feet and there's... We only don't have about 10 feet that the cars can't park. You could delineate about 10 feet back. That's it. That's what we'll have to do with it. Yeah. Okay. What do you want it? What do you want that? How do you want that done? Uh, striped lines or maybe, something. Maybe like a hash line? line? No parking. Maybe like a hash line or 147? Well, okay. just, just, just You're going to gonna mark this guy's <coughs> yard all up. It's going to look stupid. Well, you want him to park right on Route 47. No, I, did I say that? No, but I am making... You're that. saying that, no, not I me. am saying that because you are basically counteracting everything we're trying to compromise here. And I don't want to see the whole yard all well, lined this suggest? way, that so way. That, I mean, that, okay, so let's... We were asking the neighbors about lights. So... Are the neighbors going to want to look at painted blacktop? Well, how would you? Well, you come up with a suggestion. We will. I will tell you I'm, nothing. Yeah. Well, I'm just. You I'm just, just asking the question. Come though. up with a suggestion so the cars will not be parked right on the door. Right. 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 That is a nice touch. Very nice touch. But there's no room. Before you uh, talk about a, a highway sign, a pylon sign, 
better check the bylaw pretty carefully yeah. because I don't think you have enough room to set it back from. I don't either, Bill. Because it's got to be 20 feet, right? 15. It's, yeah, it's, 20. It's, it's, it's 20 in every. I've never done a something in the, in this business zone. So it's, it's 20 in a regular business. So if it's 20 feet, it's going to be more. close to impossible. But I'll, we'll look at that to make sure that it can't, it can or can't happen. And I, I, not to bring it up again, but I still have a questions about the total maximum number of cars allowed on the property at any given time. Yes. I believe the license that you were referring to previously doesn't reference 10 cars for repair. It says 10 cars on the property at any given time. For sale. For sale. Because no automotive repair shop in the town of Hadley is limited to how many cars they can repair. It doesn't say that. Like I said it doesn't. They don't say it. No, no garage. No but automotive repair in the whole town of Hadley has a fixed number of number you can only have 10 cars for repairs. Well, no, nowhere. Because of the way this is worded, and I'll submit it to the file, it says limit of 10 motor vehicles on property at any one time. Um, and I don't know. For sale. No. It well, doesn't it, say it that. is it is the class two license, but it specifically said it doesn't say for sale. Limit class ten two motor vehicles is on for property sale. One time. Yeah. It's, you don't right. need a class two license for repair. I don't. But in this case, this it's was something. For, it's clearly specifically said it, this for was, sale. This was what started. this was what the property owner accepted. And if they should have argued it, that was the time to argue it. But the select board said limit of 10 motor vehicles on property at any one time. For a class 2 license. It doesn't say motor vehicles must be displayed got. with visible for sale signs on that's them. Right. So that's why I'm saying the grandfathering is incomplete. It's grandfathered for sales, arguably. I don't think it's grandfathered for repairs. And limited business doesn't allow automotive uh, uses. So. The only grandfather I mean, they can hang their hat on is sales. The, the license that you hold in your hand mentions repairs. Um, all we had, all we were presented with was evidence of sales. So that use is grandfather. Agreed. So you mean to tell me that a guy is going to invest all this money to sell five cars? Yeah. What is wrong with you? The, the, the grandfather of the repairs did not need a permit, as I understand it. It was a grandfather use. Sure. But you, so you didn't, need a, uh, you didn't need a license from anybody to continue that business, but you they did need a license to sell the cars. Right. So. But were they doing repairs? They were doing everything. There's car parts in that place that stuff taken apart. That's all Jack together. did over there was repair. So. so I'd say the grandfathering just extends to sales. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's an argument to that. Admit, for that that, yes. that land is allowed in a, that is, automotive is allowed in that district. Repair? No. No. Then how were they doing it? So we need they some clarification. They, they, they were making were the same thing. They were grandfathering clause of the old Jack Presto. When is application being made for a new license is what I want to know. We have to get through this process first and then we go to the select board. So, I have some homework to do, but where, where are we at here? Well, I know one thing. I don't want to stick that lady <coughs> with this property that she can't do nothing with it and lose everything she's got. That's not true. Yeah, well, that is I, true. The, there are, if you didn't like it, why the hell didn't you buy it? There are multiple uses allowed for that property in the limited business district. I came to the board in the spring to get your clarification on what what I could represent. And I've had a very interested person who I respect for his hard work. 
a respect for his following. So it seemed to me it would be logical to keep something that's always had autos of some sort there. I'm not going to run a business. My husband worked his heart out to approve that property. And Paul is another hard worker who will continue to improve the property. And I think he respects his neighbors there. He wants it to be happy for everybody. And I, who have waited since May or June, would like to see some finality on this project. Um, well, my version of this is the proposed buyer is willing to work with this board and the neighbors to make this thing work. And again, I don't want to see that lady get messed up that she can't do nothing with her property. And as long as I remember, that that what that place sold cars and, and did car repairs. I've had cars repaired there. Okay. Yeah. Right. Exactly. We, we used to have tractors repaired there. Mike, yes, the big know. argument that coming in is the grandfathering of a business yeah. use. It's two years, and she did produce the fact that they sold a couple of cars there in the two years. So as a business. It's allowed to exist. Mm -hmm. but now we're doing the fine tuning according to. But the then again, plan. those cars probably were repaired right there. Well, no. right. Do you have anything that might say that you're helping? I repair could them? probably find something, but I, all I can tell you Jim, is my husband died. And when it, I agree, I brought in the document that showed the sales because that's what we request. Right. I don't know if I can find anything I repair for his own work, probably, but not. He sold used cars there, mm -hmm. so he would have to fix Everybody them. has to repair a used car, yeah. not a new car. Yeah, right. But it, it's a matter, grandfathering is a matter of scale. And if putting the everything that, putting the most that you could squeeze onto the lot is not consistent with the evidence of grandfathering. This that is we far from seen. the most. And Jim Maximoski knows exactly mm -hmm. what that is to with the Matusco trucking. Uh, what the hell is the Matusco trucking? That that is the exact the same what? case, kind of. Well, what? I mean, I, I know, I knew coming into this that everybody was going to think back to when Lesko had it, right. and we all realized that the place that Paul has on the corner of East Street is full of cars, no question. So again, this plan shows that we're not intending to do that. I, again, I left plenty of space for people to see. Come what guarantees do we have that he will abide by it? You have the guarantee that you get from anybody that ever comes before right. this board. Well, he's got it. Uh, so yeah. there's. Uh, but but yeah, I understand. But if, he, if you cut it down to 15 to 10 there, I personally am good with that. If you can produce anything that he redu repairs some cars, even the ones that he sold would be monumentally helpful. You know, even we if, should ask me that in June. <laughs> okay. If there were bills and repairs and stuff like that that you may have, you may not. Yeah. Well, Randy, you can work it out and come back. And I think once we see the refinement, we'll be able to make it in two weeks or a month. So how many of the cars that you got parked in East Street will be parked here right now? Only four, so four, four, four five. I have a couple of cars. Right. But how second. much? How much business do you turn away every day because you're having room to park October cars? October second or October sixteenth. Well, those yeah. are the two choices. Because the space. Uh, I'll, I'll start with the second. And if I okay. have a problem, I'll let you know. I, I check my schedule. Okay. I don't have it with me. As soon as possible. Yeah, it'll be October second. We'll come back. Um, and the only thing that she's going to be able to provide, to, as far as repairs go, is parts receipts. Yeah, right. Well, what else can you Because you, you don't, when you're, when you're selling cars, you don't bill yourself right. for the repairs you did. You buy the parts and you put them in the envelope that says this is, I put this much money in this car. But you know it because you sell, everybody has to, you use cars, you either have to send them out to repairs or you, you repair yourself. them yourself. Right. There's no such thing as buying a used car and just throw it on a lot. To and I'd just like to make a comment to the young people in the audience. 
in a nutshell, this is distilling down what zoning is all about. Mm -hmm. The rights of the individual to do what they think they want to do and the rights of the community, i.e. the neighbors, to kind of have some say too. So it is a delicate balance between the rights of the property owner and the rights of the community. And that's where we are now. So you're part of that balance again. Hey, hey Jim, you know, I, I've been listening to your whole conversation here, and you're comparing Jack Lesko's operation of repairs, basically, for 50 years to Jack, who was repairing his own antique cars and reselling at the time before he passed away. So, you know, you got to take into consideration, I, I know that's what your point was, what you're trying to make, Joe. And John, you were you're saying, well, what was there and what's there now? We gave the permit for 10 cars because he cleaned the place up and he kept most of his repairs inside the garage because you didn't know that he was repairing them there. And the couple that he did put outside were for sale. I drove by there myself a few times. And he, he really kept on Did you know the guy? Yeah. Well, did you have any dealings with him? No, no, I just knew him through well, the car shows. You, you visited the place and you actually seen them repairing cars? Yeah, he building? was repairing cars in that building. Yeah. We, when we, he was still alive. Yeah. That's good enough for me. We, we believe he was repairing cars. Yeah. But we would like to see some kind of a proof of that yeah. so that there's... Yeah. No, we're, we're, you know, we're, we're not like, well, your word against my word versus against anybody else's word. I mean, some kind of like John said. Is that would, would, a Sluckman's word? I no, I, you know, I got, a, a, I got a couple thing. antique cars myself, so I periodically yeah, talk to Clark's junkyard, uh, Charlie Clark up there, and her husband before he passed. I spoke with him two times on a couple of the antique cars that I have. So, you know, it, it was a hobby as much as it was a business. I, I was in that building a bunch of times with Jack Kerslis, and I, he had cars apart, fixing them. Mm -hmm. so. But I mean, you, even if you have any witnesses, if you can't find any repair bills, but just as uh, Johnny's a witness, he's a witness, yeah. he witnessed it. Well, it's kind of a question of turnover. How many cars turn over on these three property a week? How many come and leave? I have about, uh, I would say about five to six cars leaving, and I have about six of them coming. So you got more cars out there than yeah, you're working Yeah, so on. I can't catch up, which is good. But, uh, you know, we try to do the best we can. Are there any abandoned cars there? Well, we have a couple cars that people bought, and then we fixed it. And then now they are nowhere to be found. So I called them. I went to the court system. They, they are all doing paperwork and everything. But we don't know what to do with those cars. I have three, four cars sitting on East Street. I'm just going to junk it now because it's almost eight, nine months. I can't find these people. I call them. You can, uh, you can file as an abandoned vehicle with the police department if you, they abandoned the car, yeah. and then you, you can get rid of it. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Right. File a thing with the police. Yes, clear up some of the congestion. Yes. That's why I asked you, how many in and out? Seems like you got more there than in and out. No, you, usually the big jobs they they stay because sometimes, you know, I, I have about sixty percent of heavy work, and forty percent is in and out, big jobs, oil changes, flat tires or whatever. They go in and out, but then yeah. the big jobs yeah. it takes us a week, two weeks to do it. Sometimes that lot you have is just too small for you. Yes, it's too small for you. Will this lot lighten up that lot? Oh yes. If I, if Are I, you just saying that, oh yeah, or do you mean that? No, no, I, I'm not trying to, you know, if the, to buy this place, I'm 50 years old. I don't want to start this from zero. I, I moved from New York. I sold all my gas stations. I came here just to slow my life down. But now, you know, at age 50, I don't want to do this again. But whenever I pass by that place, I knew Jack also. And whenever, whenever I pass by that place, I see that place dead, dirty, and everything, I feel very bad. And when I met Linda, Linda said, you know what, Paul, uh, what do you think about this? I said, you know what, if you want me to buy it, you know what, I will buy it for you. I'll buy the place and I'll, I'll try to make it look good for the town of Hadley. Just like I did this place. I put a bunch of money well, in this, I'll tell you something. this place. 
If we approve this and you move lighten up your place there by bringing stuff here, but if you end up doing this, like you got your place there, I'm going to be one PO person. No, what well, is it, not going to happen? And then the neighbors that are all concerned about uh, all this, which I which I live there too, so I do understand their their right. concern. But I'll be respectful to all these guys, and whatever they they feel like they want me to do, I'll do that. If the lights are not good and they want a light that doesn't shine up in the window, I'll make sure that it doesn't happen. Keep it clean. Clean and organized. Yes. Clean and presentable. Yes. That's what the plan is. Okay. I'm just putting it up for the minute, that's all. I just want to reference the right name to the minutes. Sure. Well, the aspirants, I gotta take after me. John, you were asking okay. about John, you were asking about the guarantee that it would comply whatever we we did agree on for the site plan. And we did advocate out of the responsibility for checking uh, to the building inspector. But yeah. we did reserve the right to have an individual vote, so we could put a bond on if you see fit for it. Because you were kind of the one that didn't want to have the bond. You know, I, I would give the people the benefit of the doubt. But what happened to echelons there should never happen again. The spillover or things like that, that shouldn't happen. Well, I can guarantee you that I know of two people who will be very quick to report any issues that are out of the line with this plan. And they're sitting. So you're going to come there. back. <laughs> you're going to come back in two weeks, with lighting, the parking lines, um, delineate river drive parking, and green space. And the dumpster. Oh, okay. Yes. So if I could just ask, um, you know, one question about you know people that will be sort of you know on guard in case the numbers of cars that are allowed are exceeded. So what is that number of cars that, that we can call somebody if it's exceeded on the lot? So right now it is... It'd be the Board of Selectmen. They issued a Class 2 license. He's asking for the number. Is that right? Is that what you're looking for? No, no. no you say that we would be vigilant in case the rules are overrun, but it's not clear yeah. what those rules okay, are. Okay, so right now, after coming to some compromise, we've got 16 cars for the business and two cars for the house. So as long as there's 18 or less, everything is good. Right. If there's 19, then we can make a call. I mean, but our argument before was that the license says 10 cars on the property at any given time. It's, I mean, there's an argument to be made that that's 10 cars, period, and yeah. not for sale. That's 10 cars is a the, the class two that, license. That, 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 that's a number you'll have to, re to review with the board of select right. Well, they have any risk, they have, I take that back. The Board of Selectmen has not issued a license yet. Right. Right. Okay. And again, the license is for class two. That's a class two license, which is the sale of cars. It's got nothing to do with anything else. Well, you, and, yeah, and, and but again, there's okay. an argument to be made to the, you know, contrary to what you're saying, it says 10 cars on the property at any given time, period, not for sale. Your question is a legitimate one because it could be a shell game. Oh no, this is for repairs, okay. this is for well, sales. I'm gonna so have to want a number. I'm gonna have to look at my license. Okay. Mine says five cars. If it says five cars on my property at any one time, I gotta shut down the barbecue and I gotta shut down my office. Because I would very very much exceed that. So it's pertinent to the license and nothing else. Right. I agree with you 100%. But the, even the house there, which has had wonderful tenants for the last couple of years, they left for graduate school. I've been waiting until this is resolved to find new tenants. We usually have had one car on their area, but what's going to happen if they have a guest and they have another car? You know, I don't think anybody's arguing count. about that. Well, that's yeah, exactly right. Yeah. What we're yeah. concerned about, there was some concern about the neighbors when he had the cars in the Bimbin gas station. Oh, he was, he yeah, was okay. moving his cars onto the yeah. adjacent yeah. property, and they, you know, they appealed to me, and 
I said we cannot enforce. I think it's really hard because it, it's always been a car repair place. And I really so was optimistic when okay. I had a buyer who okay. I felt worked as hard as my husband did. And just just to aware on that the so 2nd of October, we've got the PVPC coming in for usual PVC bylaw review, so you might be here for a while. We'll, we won't. Okay, so you'll take him? We'll, we'll, we'll definitely first. take depending where, what walk-ins we have. Yeah. But this may take more than a few minutes, mm -hmm. so it'll probably be after um, PVPC. Okay. Okay. And I yes, mean, if I you're don't remember your name, but you want to see the revised plan at town hall? Yes. Okay. And the next meeting is what date? And then can we decide on a time or time period in which that will be fired? Well, if you if you give me an email address, I will make a PDF of this in the next couple of days when I revise it and send it to you. Okay, sure. And get a copy. I had I had it. I had two emails from uh, the clerk today about people coming in looking for the plans. Okay. I'll get a typical. Okay. Yeah. The uh, someone else. So we're going to continue this hearing to October second. Like I was telling Randy, it'll probably be later as opposed to earlier because we could PVPC Pioneer Valley Planning Commission coming in for a routine monthly meeting. So it may be a while we'll get to you that night. Okay. Um, yeah, okay. And that's it for this. Okay. Yes. Are there any other business? What kind of business? Any that's a monthly business. Oh, oh, just a quick update. The Gazette. You get that squared away. Yeah. Half squared away. I went to see the <coughs> accountant and gave her a copy of one of these invoice statements and explained everything to her. And she went through the bills and found out we had made most of the payment, but we weren't credited to it. They Gazette put it against somebody else. And so. Wait, are in town? Sounds like yeah, about yes. the right speed for the Yeah, I all the departments in town. Anyway, long story short, uh, the Gazette has at least straightened out up to 60 days uh, our invoicing. And I'm going to make a copy of this and give it to the accountant and tell her this is the latest disaster. But we went from owing them close to $2,000 to now only owing them Seven hundred and ninety-five dollars. Do you think that's right? No, we should owe them zero. Oh. <laughs> she said she would take care of it because she wants specific things. So that's just information. So we will see you next Tuesday night, seven o'clock, right here. I have nothing else. Motion okay. Do we have any progress with Nyhart Secretary to do our minutes? I'm getting her doing decisions right now. Okay. What about the minutes? How many months are we I back? I couldn't tell you off the top of my head. Probably more than a couple. Yeah, more than a couple. It's just almost the, almost the first of the year. Okay. Um, I'm going to see something else when you're happy. I'm going to take this out. It'll come for me, unfortunately, afterwards. Okay. Motion to adjourn. Second. So, all in favor? Uh, media, thank, uh, media history, thank you, and thank you, Drew and John.